modern world. In the rugged terrain of Extremadura, Spain, in the waning years of the 15th century, a child was born who would one day cast his shadow across the pages of history. Hernán Cortés entered the world around 1485 in the modest town of Medellín, nestled amidst the sun-scorched hills of his native land. Little could his humble surroundings foretell the grandeur of the destiny that awaited him. Cortés was born into a world in flux, a world on the cusp of epochal change, Spain newly unified under the banner of the Catholic monarchs, Ferdinand and Isabella, pulsated with the fervor of exploration and conquest. The allure of the new world, with its promise of untold riches and boundless opportunities, cast a spell upon the imaginations of adventurous souls like Cortés. From an early age, Cortés displayed a restless spirit and a thirst for adventure that could not be quenched within the confines of his provincial upbringing. He was drawn to the tales of brave explorers and intrepid adventurers who had ventured into the unknown, carving out empires and fortunes with nothing but their wits and their courage. In 1501, at the age of just 16, Cortés set forth from his homeland, bound for the bustling port city of Seville, where the great adventure of his life would begin. There, amidst the teeming crowds and bustling markets of the city's docks, Cortés embarked on a journey that would take him to the farthest reaches of the known world and beyond. In Seville, Cortés found himself swept up in the swirling currents of Spain's burgeoning empire, where merchants and soldiers mingled with sailors and scholars in a heady mix of ambition and aspiration. It was a world of opportunity and danger, where fortunes were won and lost on the turn of a tide, and Cortés was determined to make his mark upon it. In the swirling currents of the New World, Hernán Cortés found himself swept up in a maelstrom of ambition, adventure and audacity, Arriving in the Caribbean colony of Hispaniola in 1504, the young Cortés wasted no time in immersing himself in the frenetic world of Spanish conquest and exploration. In those early years, Cortés cut his teeth on the harsh realities of colonial life, serving as a lowly clerk and soldier in the service of the Spanish crown. But even in the humblest of positions, Cortés' indomitable spirit and insatiable thirst for adventure set him apart from his peers, earning him the admiration of his superiors and the envy of his rivals. It was not long before Cortés found himself drawn to the wild frontiers of the New World, where tales of untold riches and uncharted lands beckoned with irresistible force. In 1511, he joined the expedition of Diego Velázquez to conquer the island of Cuba, where he would carve out a name for himself as a fearless soldier and cunning tactician. But it was not until 1518 that Cortés would embark on the greatest adventure of his life, a quest that would catapult him into the annals of history and forever alter the course of human events. With the backing of Velázquez, who had been appointed governor of Cuba, Cortés set out to explore the mysterious lands to the west, where rumors of vast empires and boundless riches abounded. In February of that year, Cortés set sail from the port of Havana with a small fleet of ships and a band of adventurers bound for the shores of Mexico and the heart of the Aztec Empire. His mission was clear, to explore the newly discovered lands, establish colonies, and claim the riches of the New World for the glory of Spain. But Cortés' ambitions would soon outstrip his orders, as he set his sights on the conquest of the mighty Aztec Empire itself. With his iron will and unshakable determination, Cortés would stop at nothing to achieve his goals, forging alliances with indigenous peoples, outwitting rival conquistadors and defying the will of his own superiors in his relentless pursuit of glory and gold. And the swirling mists of the early 16th century, the ancient civilizations of Mesoamerica, stood on the brink of cataclysmic change. 
In the heart of the Aztec Empire, the majestic city of Tenochtitlan shimmered like a jewel in the sun. Its gleaming temples and bustling markets, a testament to the ingenuity and ambition of its inhabitants. But lurking on the horizon was a force unlike any the Aztecs had ever encountered. A force that would shake the very foundations of their world and reshape the course of history forever. At the center of this tumultuous drama stood two men, each a colossus in his own right. On one side was Moctezuma II, emperor of the Aztec Empire, a man of divine lineage and boundless ambition whose word was law and whose will was absolute. On the other side was Hernán Cortés, the audacious conquistador whose thirst for glory and gold knew no bounds, whose iron will and cunning intellect had brought him to the shores of Mexico in search of conquest and riches. In the heart of the vast Aztec Empire, nestled amidst the shimmering waters of Lake Texcoco, lay a city unlike any other. A city of wonder and splendor, of myth and majesty. This was Tenochtitlan, jewel of the Aztec Empire, a metropolis that dazzled the eyes and captured the imagination with its grandeur and grace. As one approached the city, one could not help but be struck by its sheer audacity and ambition. Rising from the waters like a mythical island, Tenochtitlan was a marvel of engineering and innovation. Its network of causeways and canals linking the city to the surrounding shores and allowing for the free flow of goods and people. At the heart of Tenochtitlan stood its beating heart, the sacred precinct known as the Great Temple. Here, atop a towering pyramid of stone, the Aztec priests offered up sacrifices to the gods, their rituals shrouded in mystery and myth. Surrounding the temple complex were the bustling markets and bustling neighborhoods of the city, where traders hawked their wares and artisans plied their trades. But it was not just the sights and sounds of Tenochtitlan that captivated the senses. It was the smell of exotic spices and incense, the taste of fresh fruits and roasted meats, the feel of cool stone beneath one's feet, and the warmth of the tropical sun upon one's skin. It was a city of sensory overload where every corner held a new surprise and every street a new adventure. And towering above it all, like a guardian watching over its domain, was the great palace of the Aztec Emperor, a sprawling complex of palatial halls and opulent gardens. Here Moctezuma held court, his every whim attended to by a retinue of servants and advisers, his every word treated as law by his subjects. But for all its beauty and grandeur, Tenochtitlan was also a city of contradictions and contrasts. Beneath its gleaming facade lay a dark underbelly of poverty and oppression, where the cries of the downtrodden mingled with the laughter of the privileged. And looming on the horizon was the specter of war and conquest. As the Spanish conquistadors drew ever closer, their eyes alight with greed and ambition. In the crisp autumn of October 1519, the fate of empires hung in the balance as Hernán Cortés, the relentless Spanish conquistador, embarked on a fateful march towards Cholula, the second largest city in central Mexico. With him marched a formidable force bolstered by the allegiance of some 1,000 Tlaxcalteca warriors, bitter enemies of the Aztec Empire. What ensued would stain the annals of history with bloodshed and betrayal. Cortes, whether driven by premeditated strategy to instill fear upon the awaiting Aztecs at Tenochtitlan or, as he later claimed in self-defense during an investigation, motivated by suspicions of native treachery, sanctioned a brutal massacre within Cholula's central plaza. Thousands of unarmed members of the nobility fell victim to Spanish steel, and the city bore witness to flames that licked at its ancient structures. The narrative unfolded as Cortes and his men, now enriched with the spoils of Cholula, 
approached the sacred heart of the Aztec Empire on the auspicious day of November 8, 1519, they were met with a deceptively peaceful reception by Moctezuma. This mighty emperor, a shrewd tactician in his own right, welcomed Cortes and his entourage into the island city of Tenochtitlan, harboring ambitions to discern the weaknesses of his guests and crush them in due time. Yet the gifts of gold lavished upon the Spaniards by Moctezuma intended to placate instead kindled their ambitions for greater plunder. Cortes, in correspondence with King Charles, purported to have learned of the Aztecs' belief that he was an emissary of the feathered serpent god Quetzalcoatl, or even the deity himself, a claim contested by modern scholars. This purported revelation, whether genuine or embellished, further fueled Cortes' determination to assert dominance. A messenger later advised Cortes that several Spaniards on the coast had been attacked and killed by Aztecs while supporting the Totonacs, and at this point Cortes decided to seize Moctezuma as a hostage in his palace and would thereafter indirectly rule Tenochtitlan through him. However, the delicate balance of power was soon disrupted by the arrival of another Spanish expedition led by Panfilo de Narvaez dispatched by Cortés' rival, Diego Velázquez. Faced with the threat of internal conflict, Cortés left a garrison in Tenochtitlan under Pedro de Alvarado's command and confronted Narváez with a daring expedition. Despite numerical inferiority, Cortés managed to subdue Narváez and persuade his men to join his cause. Events took a tragic turn when Alvarado, acting in Cortes' absence, committed a massacre within the Great Temple, inciting a local rebellion. Cortes swiftly returned to quell the uprising, only to find Moctezuma dead, purportedly stoned to death by his own people. Faced with a hostile populace, Cortes initiated a harrowing retreat known as the Noche Triste, during which much of the looted treasure was lost. But Cortes's resilience proved unyielding. Rallying his forces with Tlaxcalan support, he initiated a campaign of attrition against Tenochtitlan, culminating in a brutal siege. Through strategic maneuvering and relentless bombardment, Cortes gradually wore down the Aztec defenses, block by block, until the once proud city lay in ruins. The total number of Spanish forces commanded during the conquest of Mexico is estimated at around 2,750 infantry and 95 cavalrymen, supported by between 1 and 200,000 indigenous allies from various tribes and city-states who rallied to Cortes' banner in the hope of defeating their common enemy, the Aztec Empire. Although Cortes initially set out with less than 700 men, his ranks were swelled during the course of the campaign with Spanish soldiers seeking adventure and a share in the spoils of war. As for the Aztecs themselves, their forces were formidable but ultimately insufficient to withstand the combined might of Cortes and his indigenous allies. At the height of the siege of Tenochtitlan, it is believed that the city was defended by tens of thousands of Aztec warriors, including both professional soldiers and conscripts drawn from the city's vast hinterlands. Despite their numerical superiority, however, the Aztecs were ultimately overwhelmed by the superior tactics, technology and firepower of the Spanish conquistadors, who employed cannons, muskets and horses to devastating effect. Spanish casualties over the course of the campaign numbered around 1,800, including 1,000 killed in battles. Indigenous population casualties were in the hundreds of thousands on both sides. The culmination of Cortes' campaign came with the capture of Cuauhtémoc, the last ruler of Tenochtitlan, in August 1521. The fall of Tenochtitlan marked the end of an era and the beginning of a new chapter in the history of the Americas. The Aztec Empire, once the most powerful civilization in Mesoamerica, lay in ruins, its temples desecrated, 
its people enslaved, its treasures plundered by the relentless greed of the Spanish conquistadors. With the fall of the Aztec Empire, Cortes laid claim to its riches and territories, renaming the conquered city Mexico City. Cortes' victory came at a staggering cost. The conquest of the Aztec Empire unleashed untold suffering and devastation upon the indigenous peoples of Mexico who were ravaged by disease, famine and war. Cortes himself would be haunted by the ghosts of his conquest, grappling with the moral and spiritual implications of his actions until the end of his days. In the aftermath of the conquest, Cortes would go on to govern Mexico as its first colonial governor, presiding over a vast and turbulent empire that stretched from the shores of the Gulf of Mexico to the Pacific coast. Yet his rule was marked by controversy and conflict, as rival factions vied for power and influence in the wake of the conquest. In 1541, Cortes returned to Spain where he sought to secure his legacy and defend his honor against his many detractors. But his efforts were in vain, and he would die in obscurity in 1547, his dreams of glory and immortality forever shattered by the harsh realities of history. Yet despite his flaws and failings, Hernán Cortés remains a towering figure in the annals of history a symbol of the boundless ambition and ruthless determination that drove the conquistadors to conquer empires and reshape the world. His legacy is one of triumph and tragedy, of conquest and catastrophe, a testament to the enduring power of the human spirit to overcome all obstacles in pursuit of greatness. Thank you for embarking on this insightful journey through history, if this brief yet enriching historical summary has kindled your curiosity, we extend an invitation to like and subscribe to our channel.